Thank you. Four Southern California tribes are on the brink tonight of one of the largest expansions of gambling in the history of the United States. Among them, the Pechanga tribe in the Temecula Valley. Colleen Williams, my partner on the road tonight in Temecula, has more on that issue. Colleen. Well, the voters may get a chance in February to decide whether the Pechanga Resort and Casino, which is really just down the road from here, and three other Southern California Indian casinos should get any bigger. The tribes involved are the Pechanga, as you mentioned, Agua Caliente, Morongo, and Sequan. And in a new agreement with the state, those four tribes would operate some of the largest casinos in the world, permitting them to have additional slot machines, more than any casinos in Las Vegas. But the casino expansion won't happen unless the voters approve it. And with billions at stake, the opposition is mounting. 2,000 slot machines cover the floors of the Pachanga Casino, but tribal officials say they need more. When people line three or four deep and wait an hour or two or three to play a slot machine, you don't have enough on the floor. That's why Pachanga and three other Southern California tribes renegotiated their individual gambling compacts with the state earlier this year. With these amended agreements, Pachanga and Morongo can add 5,500 new slots. The Agua Caliente and Sequan tribes could expand their slots by 5,000. Some of the casinos would house two and a half times the number of slot machines that are in the largest Las Vegas casinos. Scott McDonald represents opponents of the compacts. They are petitioning to put a referendum on each compact on the February ballot so voters get final say on gambling expansion, not the legislature. The people who are working to put this on the ballot include two Indian tribes, Paula in northern San Diego County, uh, United Auburn near Sacramento. There are racetracks, Bay Meadows and Hollywood Park, and a labor union, Unite Here, which deals with hotel workers. According to McDonald, the Hotel Workers Union opposes the compacts because they would change the way workers get union representation if they decide to organize. But it's the expansion of slots that's drawing the most fire. McDonald says the racetracks feel they can't compete with all those slots. But the tribes say the compacts simply are not fair. It plays favoritism by giving a third of the state's gambling pie to these four tribes out of 108 in the state. Pachanga says the compacts don't just benefit the four tribes, they benefit every Californian because the casinos must pay the state a percentage of revenues from all the slots. Our state will get more than $9 billion over the next two decades. Pachanga recently began running this ad to counter the opposition, but even that $9 billion figure is up for debate. The nonpartisan legislative analyst office in Sacramento called that estimate overly optimistic. The LAO estimates annual slot revenues in the tens of millions of dollars, which it says comes to far less than the $9 billion over the life of the compacts. They expire in 2030. I worked at both the Agua Caliente and the Morongo Casinos for a total of about two years. I didn't work at Pechanga, but I know that workers at Pechanga did receive the same anti-union letters that we received at Agua Caliente and Morongo. Somebody said yesterday that they're just trying to tell us our rights under TLRO, and that's just not true. These letters are intimidating. They are threatening to us. When the company puts out these letters, they, they silence everybody. I helped open the, the Agua Caliente Casino in, in uh, April 2001. If um, an employee upsets the management there at Agua Caliente um, in any way, or if you speak up about anything, or if you're different in any way at Agua Caliente, um, they make your life a living hell. Um, they've... Um, uh, discriminated me against me first because of my health problems and second because uh, I'm an op openly gay woman. The lead supervisor is this really big, tall guy. He's, uh, I had to work with him every day. He would uh, make anti-gay statements about me to other co-workers. He just didn't like me. And um, he talked about starting an anti-lesbian hate group. We received three letters, um, anti-union letters. In our, in, with our paychecks and um, 
Actually, it was they were all three the same letter who just received it three different times. The last one, we were required to go into the office and sign our names saying that we did receive them. Mm-hmm. So if Morongo says that they didn't interfere, they did. The richest tribes in California are in front of you. They're at the bargaining table. They're coming at you with enormous expansions to their opportunities to game. This will probably be the largest expansion of gambling in American history. The tens of thousands of workers currently, and God only knows going forward in this industry, that they have the right, that they have the power, that they have the ability to actually get to a conclusion of a collective bargaining agreement with their employers and take care of their families in dignity, live their lives in dignity, and cover their children with full family health care. And if you can't do that in the short period of time left in this session, we ask you, Put it off. Put it off till there's time to bring all of the stakeholders to the table and ensure that going forward, the most vulnerable people in our state, who are the engine behind currently a $7 billion industry, have the ability to live their lives in decency. After listening to Bonnie, I don't have to say anything. She said it all. Once again, I mean, that's why we, we help this woman get reelected every two years. Thank you, Bonnie. Okay.